Welcome, I welcome you all to this lecture in the course Introduction to Paninian Grammar. We are studying the features of the meta language of Panini. We have already discussed the concept of meta language and we also said that there are three additional features, additional differences in the meta language other than the object language. The object language of Paninian grammar is Sanskrit, the meta language is also Sanskrit. And in this meta language, some features are followed from the object language. But there are some additional features and that is what we are studying right now. The first difference was about the meaning of a word and we said that in the object language a word denotes some meaning which is of two kinds. One is what is generally known as meaning and the other one is the word form which is part of the meaning and in the object language it is the meaning meaning which is the head main predominant and the word form is subordinate or qualifier or modifier. And then we said that in the meta language, it is the word form which becomes the head or the main or the predominant meaning and the meaning meaning becomes subordinate or the qualifier or the modifier. This is an extremely important difference and that is why we are repeating that information. Based on this, we also said that in the meta language, the meaning of the cases, some of the cases is different. In addition to what these cases denote in the object language and they are fifth case, sixth case and seventh case, Panchami, Shashti and Saptami. Panchami is translated in the object language using the word from. Shashti is translated in the object language using the word of and Saptami is translated in the object language using the word in or on. In the meta language however, Panchami will be translated as immediately after, Shashti as in place of or instead of and Saptami will be translated by the words immediately before. This is also an extremely important difference in the meta language of Panini. This follows the first difference. And then we are studying the technique of Pratyahara. And that is what we have to study further in today's lecture. So, in the previous lecture we saw the traditional sound inventory which is arranged in terms of vowels first and consonants then and within these consonants there are three groups visible. One is a group of 25 consonants also known as class consonants divided into 5 rows and 5 columns and then there are 4 more called semi vowels here lower and finally the fricatives sh, sh, s and h. And then we also saw how the term it comes into being and helps form the first pratyahara hal. And now we will study this concept further in detail in today's lecture. So on this slide we have 14 sutras mentioned and all the final sounds of these 14 sutras which are termed it by 1, 3, 3, they are marked in red. So, an 
in the first sutra, k in the second sutra, ng in the third sutra, ch in the fourth, t in the fifth, an in the sixth, m in seventh, y in eighth, sh in ninth, sh in tenth, v in eleventh, y in twelfth, r in thirteenth, and l in fourteenth. These fourteen sounds are marked, are termed as it. Now the next question is, how to form the pratyahara? We have seen the technique in theory, how the pratyahara gets formed. Now let us look at the concrete examples as to how the pratyahara gets formed. We said that first we have to pick up a final sound which is termed as it. Any one of these 14 sounds you can pick up and place it somewhere. Then select any sound previous to it in the 14 sutras and place it before the it and then join these two sounds together and what comes out is a technical term and this technical term is called pratyahara. This technical term is generically called a pratyahara. So here is an example, concrete example. So select ch which comes at the end of the fourth sutra. Ayun, Ruluk, Eong, Ayauch, Ch, select, which comes at the end of the fourth sutra and place it somewhere. Now select any letter that comes before it. For this example, let us select A, which comes right in the first sutra, in fact, the very first sound, and then place it before Ch and join both. What you get is Ach. Now, ach is a technical term and this technical term is generically called pratyahara. Ach is a technical term and is generically called a pratyahara. This is how ach gets formed and in this ach, ch is still shown in red colors and the reason will be clear in a while. Now the next question is what does ach mean? What does it stand for? What does this technical term denote? So here is the answer. The technical term ach denotes one, all the sounds that come in between a and ch, that is one, as well as a, which is the beginning sound. So all the sounds that come in between a and ch as well as a. This is in accordance with A1171. Adirantyana Saheta, which we have already seen. The most important thing to note here is that this list of sounds does not include the markers that come in between. At the end of, let us say, first, second, and third sutra, Ayuna, Ana, does not come as a become a part of this pratyahara. Ruluk, ka, eong, nga, these three, they are not part of this pratyahara. They are not denoted by this pratyahara. I repeat, the list of sounds does not include the markers, the its that come at the end of first, second and third sutra. This is not explicitly stated in the Ashtadhyayi, but this is what is assumed, this is what is known by the tradition and has passed it down through generations. So, what is the meaning of Ach? Ach stands for, say, all the sounds between A and Ch, that is starting from A, then E, U, this is your first sutra, ru, lu, second sutra, a, o, third sutra and i, au, fourth sutra. And then there is ch here 
but that is not part of this set. A however is part of this set and this is what we meant when we indicated only ch in red and a in normal black. A is part of this meaning that is denoted by this technical term. So, ach stands for a set of sounds a, e, u, ru, lu, a, o, i and o. If you look at them closely, you will observe that they are all vowels mentioned in these 14 sutras. So, ach therefore stands for all vowels. So, this short term ach does capture a data set. There are in all 9 vowels which are denoted by this small term ach, all vowels. How will it be used? If it is observed in the actual usage in the object language that any vowel or all vowels are part of a particular grammatical operation be it a condition, be it a substituent, be it a left hand side or right hand side condition or environment and it is to be described for the description of that particular grammar, grammatical operation, Panini will use the Pratyahara ach, which stands for all vowels and depending upon the side of the environment or being a substitute or substituent case will be added to ach, case will be added to ach. So, for example, here are a few examples for you, there is a sutra acho yat, A 3197, acho yat, acho is 5 1 of ach, which means immediately after all vowels, an element is to be added. That is the meaning of this acho. So, what it stands for is a left hand side environment. So, if yat is to be added, the left hand side environment for that is a vowel, a vowel ending dhatu, which we shall study later on. Let us take the second example, acho jiniti. 72115. Acho here is in the 6th case, Shashti 6 slash 1. What it means is in place of. So, Acho means in place of all vowels. So, in place of all vowels that is Ach, a substitute takes place. So, Ach is the substituent here and therefore it gets sixth case attached to it. Similarly, let us look at the third example, Eko, Yan and Achi. Here Achi appears in the seventh case, 7 slash 1, this is 6, 1, 77. Achi is 7 slash 1 of Ach, which means immediately before all vowels. So, immediately before all vowels that is ach, a substitution takes place. So, here ach acts as a right hand environment. On this slide, <coughs> we studied how cases get attached to the pratyahara ach. Here is the fifth case, this is the sixth case and this is the seventh case. In this fifth case, ach that is a vowel acts as a left hand environment in which certain element is added. This second case acho which is 6 1 acts as a substituent for a substitute to take place. And in case of this third sutra eko yanachi, achi indicates that a vowel acts as a right hand side environment for this substitute to take place. So, depending on the 
environment the pratyahara is providing cases will be added to it and achaha achaha and achi will be used by the grammar of panini let us take another example the second example now in this second example let us try to form the pratyahara hal which is what is shown over here hal how is hal formed so follow the same procedure by picking up a final sound final sound at any of the sutras and term it as it then place it somewhere and then select any sound which appears before it in the 14 sutras and place it before this it already selected it and then join both of them together that is a technical term and this technical term is called a pratyahar so for the second example purpose let us select l which comes at the end of the 14th sutra hal so we selected l and now we place it in front of us then select any letter that comes before it so let us select h which comes in the 5th sutra and place it before l and now join both of them together and you get hal as a technical term this is our second technical term hal now what does hal mean once again we have put l in the red for obvious reasons which shall be clear once again so what does hal mean hal means all the sounds that come in between h and l starting from the 5th sutra up to the 14th sutra all the sounds that come in between h and l this is in accordance with 1171 that these sounds are denoted by h and l and also the h sound obviously this list of sounds does not include the markers that is it terms that come at the end of all the sutras in between from 5th to 13th this is not explicitly stated in the ashtadhyayi but it is understood there is one more thing that we need to note down here and that is that this list starting from h to l this list does not include the recurrence of vowel a a after h for example here this written symbol h is a symbol of consonant h plus vowel a y is consonant y plus vowel a v is consonant v plus vowel a r is consonant r plus vowel a l is consonant l plus vowel a this l is pure consonant mark this is the consonant and this is consonant plus vowel now what to do with this vowel is it a part of this set and the answer is that this list does not include the recurrence of this vowel a uh, everywhere over here which gets mentioned with each consonant it is specified by the tradition although not explicitly by panini but by the paninian tradition that this consonant a uh, that appears together with each and every consonant in this set is for the sake of clear comprehension of consonants imagine these consonants are written without a vowel in between it would be very difficult first of all to pronounce them nay impossible and also very difficult to write them down so for easier comprehension purpose vowel a uh, which comes at the beginning of all the vowels is added after each and every consonant but only the consonants are part of this 
meaning denoted by the pratyahara hal. This is what is the meaning of the pratyahara hal. This is what the pratyahara hal means. What it eventually means is all consonants, all consonants. If you look at all these sounds mentioned in the 14 sutras, they are all consonants. All the vowels were taken care of by the pratyahara. Ach, hal now takes care of all the consonants. Hal denotes the consonants. So, we have come across the term halant probably in some school days that halant refers to a consonant written as consonant in this fashion. That can stand explained if you understand the concept of hal over here. Hal stands for all the consonants in this particular fashion. Now, how will it be used? The term hal, how will Panini use it? The usage will have following steps. If it is observed that any consonant or all consonants are part of a particular grammatical operation, be it a left hand side environment or the right hand side environment or be it a substituent, if it is a part of a grammatical environment for a grammatical operation to take place and it should be described, then Panini will use the pratyahara hal as simple as that. And depending upon the side of environment or being a substitute or substituent, case will be added to this pratyahara hal. And let us take a look at some examples over here. The first example is 8464, hello, yamam, yami, lopaha, 8464. In this sutra, the word hello is used, which is 5-1 of hal. What it means is immediately after all consonants, that is immediately after hal. So, what this sutra means is that immediately after all consonants, an element is substituted by another element. For our relevance, hal acts as the left hand side environment over here. That is why it comes in the fifth case. So, fifth case is added after the pratyahara hal over here. Let us look at another example in which hal is used in the seventh case and we have the sutra hali lopaha 72113 hali lopaha. Here hali is 7 slash 1 of hal. What it means is immediately before all consonants, that is hal, a particular element is to be substituted. So, in this sutra, hal is acting as the right hand side environment. So, immediately before all consonants, some substitute happens. In order to describe this, hal is acting as the right hand side environment. In order to describe this, Panini will use seventh case and attach it to the pratyahara hal. Similarly, if we look at the sutra hali sarvesham 8322, in which hali once again occurs in seventh case. In this case again, where hali means immediately before all consonants, a particular element gets substituted. So, in this case, hal is acting once again as the right hand side environment and therefore, the seventh case is added after the pratyahara hal. This is how hal pratyahara will be used. Let us take one more example. With the Final consonant l once again. This is the third example which shows to us how to form the pratyahara. We follow the normal routine by picking up a final sound which is termed as it, place it in front of you, select any sound previous to it and place it before the it 
and join them both together. Now this term is generically called pratyahar. So select L over here which comes at the end of the 14th sutra once again and place it in front of you. Then select A which comes in the very first sutra, in fact the first sound and place it before L. And now join both of them together and you get the form Al. Al and L is still mentioned in red for the obvious reasons explained before. So you get the technical term Al. This is called a pratyahara generically. Now, how will it be used? Al and how, what will it mean? So, Al will mean all the sounds that come in between A and L. All the sounds and A as well. This is in accordance with 1171. Obviously, once again, all the markers, that is the it sounds that come in between from Sutra 1 to 13, they are obviously not part of the meaning of this Pratyahara. Similarly, as far as the consonants are concerned, any vowel that is uttered after each consonant which is part of this pratyahara meaning that is also not to be counted that is only for the sake of convenience only for the sake of distinguished comprehension of consonants. So we come to know that al stands for all the sounds that are described in these 14 sutras, any sound or all the sounds. Now let us see how this pratyahara will be used. So if it is observed that any sound is part of a particular grammatical operation, be it an environment, left hand side or right hand side or a substituent or a substitute and that is to be described, then Panini will use the pratyahara al. And depending upon the site of the environment or being a substitute or substituent, case will be added to al. For example, alontyasya 1152. In this case, alaha appears in 6 slash 1 of al in place of al. That means in place of any sound, substitute something. So, al acts as the substituent in this case. So, this sutra is a meta rule and we shall study the meta rules further in the subsequent part of this course where we shall study this sutra in detail. But in brief, the meaning of this sutra can be said, can be told as any substitute takes place at the final al or final sound. This is how Panini will use the pratyahara al. Now let us look at the meaning of eco energy, which was discussed earlier. Eco is 6 1 of ek, yan is 1 1 and of yan and achi is 7 1 of ach. Ach is any vowel. So, the meaning of this sutra is immediately before an ach that is any vowel substitute yan in place of ek. So, ach is acting as the right hand side environment, yan is the substitute and ek is the substituent. So, what is ek? Following this technique of forming the pratyahara let us see how ik is formed. So we select, we pick k which is found at the end of the sutra 2 
and we place it in front of us, then we pick E which is found in Sutra 1 and place it before K and then join them together and we get the word Ik, we get the Pratyahara Ik. Now this term stands for all sounds in between E and K that is E, U part of the first Sutra, N which is the marker not part of the Pratyahara and Ru and Lu. So E, U, Ru, Lu they are stated by the Pratyahara Ik. What is Yan? Once again the general procedure of forming the Pratyahara we follow that is we pick up a final sound which is termed as it and place it before us then select any sound previous to it and place it before this selected it and join them together and that will give us a pratyahara. So we select an which is found at the end of sutra 6 then we pick ya from sutra 5 and place it before this na and then we join them together and we get the term yan. Now this term stands for all the sounds that come in between ya and na and also ya. So yan stands for ya, wa, r which are part of the fifth sutra, ta which is a marker at the end of the fifth sutra is not part of this set and then we go to the sixth sutra where L becomes a part of this sutra. <coughs> so Y, V, R, L, they are part of this set which is denoted by the Pratyahara Yan. Y, V, R, L are mentioned as they are stated in the 14 sutras over here, but they are also shown as consonants which is what is actually meant as the meaning of this pratyahara. This is for the clear comprehension. Now putting all these things together let us try to make the meaning of Iko Yanachi. What it means is if we replace Ik by what it stands for, Yan by what it stands for and Ach by what it stands for and follow the meanings of the cases we can write the meaning of this sutra like this. Immediately before a e u ru lu a o i o immediately before this set substitute e u ru lu by y v r l consonants that is the meaning. To put it in the form of an equation what we can say is if you have e u ru lu plus a e u ru lu a o i o any of these then after applying eco energy over here you get the output in the form of y v r l consonants plus a e u ru lu a o i o that is the output. To look at the individual example if you have let us say e followed by any of these vowels e is substituted by y that means the output that you get after applying 6177 you get y consonant plus all these vowels. So this is how eco energy will be interpreted using the technique of pratyahara. So the expanded meaning of eco energy is something like this e followed by any vowels and E will be replaced by Y substituted by Y consonant and the output would be Y plus any of the vowels. Second will be U followed by any vowels and U will be substituted by V consonant and the output would be V plus any vowels. Similarly, RU followed by any of the vowels, RU will be substituted by R consonant and the output would be R plus any vowel. Fourth will be Lu followed by any vowel and Lu will be substituted by L consonant and the output would be L plus any consonant. 
Let us take one concrete e example and the other example on the right hand side. So here are the two examples. One is Madhu plus Ari put in the square bracket to indicate that this is the compound. Same thing is true about the second example also. So actually what it, what it denotes is there is this U followed by A. So this is U followed by A wherein U is substituted by V consonant and the output is V plus A. So Madhu plus Ari and you apply 6177 here because there is scope for application of 6177 and you get the output in this form Madhva plus Ari. You join it together and you get the word Madhvari which means the enemy of Madhu. Similarly, in this case you have Dhatru plus Ichha which is nothing but Ru followed by E which then will mean R followed by E wherein Ru is substituted by R and the output is R followed by E. So Dhatru will be modified to will be substituted by Dhatra followed by Ichha and you get the form Dhatricha, the desire of the creator. These two examples are the concrete examples in the object language which and which are explained using the Sutra 6177 Eko Yanachi. And there are multiple numbers of such examples which then can be explained away using 6177. Thank you and now we shall see some more pratyaharas, important pratyaharas in the next lecture. Thank you for your attention.